a bombshell that really reveals how much of the top levels of Wall Street worked until very recently. Speaking of the top levels of Wall Street escaping all accountability, yes. John Stewart had an interview with um, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon, and um, I got to tell you, I've been watching Stewart's new show, The Problem with John Stewart. It's phenomenal. It's so good. Um, I'd particularly recommend to you the episode he did on the economy. Um, pulled together all the resources. You remember on The Daily Show, they'd pull together all these clip montages so from good. news. Yeah. Done phenomenally. But then also, it's it's a little harder edge than The Daily Show. Like, he, he's clearly sharpened, become more biting. It's not on cable, so he can curse. It's a little more like, it, it's, his ideology has clearly sharpened a little bit, whereas he used to be a little more just like, let's all get along. Now there's a more direct and biting critique. One of the hallmarks of his show, which it has a companion podcast, which is where the Jamie Dimon interview lives, is all of these very powerful people, Dennis McDonough, Janet Yellen, have been sitting down with him thinking like, ah, oh, he's a comedian, yeah. it's John Stewart, he's liberal, he's on our side. And then he just goes Shreds him. after them. Shreds them. Shreds them in a way that like a true journalist actually should. Why? Because he doesn't care if he gets access to these people exactly. again. He's, and he's already, he's you know, already he's multi, like multi million. Yeah, yeah, he's like, rich, he's famous, he's got everything he wants. So it really feels like this show is about his passion to explain his passion to deliver a message, his passion as always, which he's always been so good at, at sort of exposing the hypocrisies of elites and the media in particular. So in this interview with Jamie Dimon, he has a deep debate with him about the state of the economy and whether or not it's rigged on behalf of um, the investor class, people like Jamie Dimon. And I'm gonna play you a couple of clips the first one, let me just set it up for you a little bit. Back when we were on Rising, remember mm -hmm. we talked about the business roundtable? Of course. And how they had this bullshit pledge, oh, we're gonna be socially responsible, don't worry, you don't have to regulate us, you don't have to tax us, we're gonna do it all on our own just because we're amazing people. So Diamond tries to spin Jon Stewart on like, oh, at the business roundtable, you wouldn't believe it, we're not out for just shareholder value and profits, we're really in it for the good of the people. Let's take a listen to how that exchange went. So you may be surprised, but you know the business roundtable, which you know changed its what it looks at is that we have to take care of customers, employees, communities, in addition to shareholders. Uh, actually, wants minimum wages to go up. You know, we want to fix the inner city schools. We want to have proper immigration systems. We we actually have a lot of policies that would improve the the safety net around healthcare. You know, and the system needs a lot of work to make it work for everybody. But then, Jamie, I, so here's where. I think we get into the difficulty, which is that the business roundtable signs on to all kinds of uh, socially responsible, uh, I don't know, precept, whatever you want to call them. When given the chance to advocate for policies that would make that possible, almost always fight against them. Even for you guys, 2017, everybody lobbied for that corporate tax cut. Well, the social policies that you're talking about, that the business roundtable would supposedly support, cost money. And any kind of push to raise a corporate tax rate is fought tooth and nail by yourself, JP Morgan, the business roundtable. The biggest obstacle is actually corporations like yours, the business roundtable corporations. Those seem like the biggest obstacles for us to actually implement the kind of changes that you yourself are supporting. So you see Stuart calls him out directly. Amazing. Says, you claim that you support social spending and all these good things. You really care about the common person. But when it comes down to it, the money you're using to lobby Congress is all about keeping your tax rates low. So where is this similar priority around these social spending goals that you claim to have? He calls them out straight to his face. I remember doing, yeah, that was one of the first big monologues I ever did um, back over at Rising on the business roundtable. And they were like, we're going to be socially responsible. And, you know, shareholder profits no longer, you know, are what we're going to be our guiding, you know, our guiding lodestar or whatever. We're going to focus on workers. Well, 
It's been a couple years. How did it all work out? I'm so happy that he called out that specifically because essentially what Jamie Dimon and Bezos and everybody else who's on the Business Roundtable do is they use that as a crutch in order to point to specifically whenever they get confronted over these things. They go, hey, look, our lobbying organization, we've already changed the mission. But in practice, it always comes down to lower corporate tax rate. Right now, what are they lobbying against hardcore? A minimum corporate tax of 15%. That's too far for the business roundtable because these banks and Amazon and more, and Jamie Dimon himself, he's a billionaire many times over, these guys are all in it for one reason, for profit. And hey, just be honest about it. Yeah. But don't try and tell us about how, oh, you're for social responsibility and more. And, oh, you know, 2008, that was so unfortunate. And that's why we've changed. I want people to have health care. I want people to do this. In terms of where they put their money, follow where they push it. It is all towards making sure that they get to keep more. Mm-hmm. That is it. Period. And, you know, it is amazing because – I don't know why these people seem to be sitting with Jon Stewart. Like, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't quite get it. Like, Dennis McDonough and Janet Yellen and Jamie Dimon, like, do you really think this is going to go well for you? But I think a lot of them have the hubris to think that they can spin somebody that because Jon, you know, is very, you know, he's obviously very progressive, I think, personally, and mm-hmm. pretty much on a left-to-center perspective. But if I take anything away from his public commentaries post-Trump years, he seems to have a very similar diagnosis as us yeah. as to what really happened. So- and he understands how full of it both sides of the media are and really how much class consciousness has been ignored by people in the elite circles for a long time. I really wish he'd been around yeah. during the Trump years um, because he seems to be one of the few that didn't have his brain broken by Donald Trump. Um, He also obviously has left of center progressive um, views, but he is totally willing and, you know, ready and able to call out the Democratic Party and hold to account people like Janet Yellen and Dennis McDonough who are in the Biden administration. Um, Jamie Dimon also is the Democratic donor, big Democratic donor. So he's not afraid of also pointing fingers at the Democratic Party. And I think that's something that you and I both find really important because look, your ideology is your ideology. That's fine, we can have a debate about that. But if you're just like cheerleading for one team or the other, then you're fundamentally First of all, you're a propagandist, and also you're not interesting. So um, there's another moment here that I wanted to play for you, which is also quite incredible, and I think exposes just how wildly out of step Jamie Dimon and, by extension, the entire elite class is from the actual lives of regular Americans. And this is where they get into a debate about, you know, Don't you think, John Stewart is saying, that things have been rigged in favor of these gigantic employers and away from labor and unions have been crushed and workers have so little power? Diamond actually argues with him that places like Walmart and Wendy's are amazing for workers and they're the best employers and we should be super grateful for them. Take a listen. Why is it that, you know, labor and workers haven't seen their wages grow. It's because corporations left to their own devices will, as they should, only be looking out for their profit. That's just- And I totally disagree. I think that's how they- When you, ironically, short-term profiteering and stuff like that is the worst thing a company can do. And maybe, and again, with some facts, that some of these, quote, biggest companies in America are the highest paying companies in America. And they all give medical care. They all treat their people really well. There are, I think, 30 million companies in America, you know, and I, well, I applaud small business, that, which, you know, has been- Should they share in the profits? Like when Walmart makes billions of dollars, should their workers share in that? Should they also get profit sharing? Should they also benefit when the company benefits, especially since the company benefits from American infrastructure- and from the taxpayers subsidizing their workforce with social safety programs. So should that be the case? Yeah, I don't want to talk about any one particular company, but well, I, I'm companies, using them as an example. A lot of companies do do that. They have profit sharing plans and they've got training plans and they, they have an opportunity for people. And they Generally get, at the white collar level, you know, no, unless, unless they have a really strong union. Again, it's a, that's a huge 
that's just hugely not true. That, you know, people make fun of these starter jobs, you know, where they're, I mean, I, I've, my whole life I've heard people make fun of burger flippers and stuff like that. Jobs bring dignity. Jobs are, you know, is that first rung in the ladder. My guess is that half the that's people- That's not making run, fun of jobs. Half the, that's... half the people that run McDonald's started as a burger flipper. It was McDonald's who trained them, who gave an opportunity. And I, and I think it's a mistake to just diminish the role that these companies played. Just like the U.S. military does the best job in the world, in my opinion, of taking kids out of inner cities and to give them haircuts and train, how be team works. So the, the bigger companies provide a tremendous amount of that, quite deliberately. I'd be hard pressed to say that Walmart, Burger King, and those corporations don't exploit their workers. That is a classic Incredible. of the genre, Crystal. That's a classic of the genre. These big guys, they, you know, it's actually really good for work. It's like whenever people talk about how Amazon right now is paying like a 20 something dollar minimum wage. I think that's great, you know, in order for these people to get that. But, uh, they only get a 10-minute break. You can get fired by an app. Um, they have a huge amount of control over your life. Don't you dare try and form a union. Uh, make sure that whenever you're at the workplace that you're a good little soldier and you do exactly what you're told. And, oh, if all of you guys come together and say that actually we want a 15-minute break, every single one of you is fired. And, uh, oh, we're the only employer in town, so good luck trying to go anywhere else. You know, you used a word a yeah. moment ago, which is hubris. Yeah. And— that is really what comes off in this exchange. Like, Jamie Dimon has clearly Very never good. had an honest conversation with a Walmart worker mm -hmm. or any other service industry worker about what their life is like, how hard it is to survive, the type of hours that they're working, the inhuman way that they are treated when they are on the job, um, because he can just— arrogantly wave of the hand, oh, of course these places are amazing for the workers. Right. And Stuart, just being the stating the obvious, it's I'd be pretty hard pressed to say that these types of companies don't exploit their workers. And that theme of arrogance with Jamie Dimon comes through throughout this entire podcast. He repeatedly tells Stuart, basically, you don't know what you're talking about. This is way more complicated. It's above your, your understanding here. It's way more complicated oh. than you could possibly understand. So with implication being, that's why you have to leave it to people like me yep. and other members of the ruling class to set the policy for the rest of you peons who are too stupid to ultimately understand. Yeah. Number one, that's absurd. And these same people, the Jamie Diamonds of the world, how many times have they gotten things wrong to the extent that they nearly destroyed the entire world? They needed a Relatively bailout. Relatively recently, okay? Right, yeah. <laughs> Number two, look, you listen to the interview, you listen to John Stewart's work, you follow his work over the years. This is an incredibly intelligent individual who has done his homework and knows what he's talking about and has actually, I think in the past 10 years, talked to some regular people who could give him a few insights into what life is actually like for them. Um, unlike Jamie Dimon, who seems to have none of that connectivity. Yeah. So listen, I pulled two of the highlights that I thought were most revealing, but I got to tell you the whole hour interview on the podcast is extraordinarily worth your time. There were many moments that I was like, oh, that's that's <laughs> perfect. Like, that's incredible. It's so satisfying to actually listen to this guy be told that he's full of shit to his face. Yeah. Well, you know, props to John. Uh, keep it up, man. Seriously, because that is, it's, it's so important here. And it's also very telling to me. He was a darling for elite media in the Bush years because he was calling out Fox. But nowadays, he doesn't get nearly the amount of promo, mm. the, nearly the amount of love, because now he's calling out everybody. And, you know, I'm here for it. I'm here for the new John. We're here for it. We support you, John. That's right. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.